Hey everybody, welcome. I've got another version of the B-Box out. This is the one I was working on the other day. And I'm going to put this one up on the Gumroad. In fact, it's already up on the Gumroad. Uh, so you can go pick it up. All right, so just to go over this, you can just click to add this in. There's one little procedure to it, uh, which won't be in the final, final version, which is probably going to take me weeks or a month or who knows how long. Uh, I'm just going to come over and pin this geometry nodes to the... Uh, workspace over here and main mesh is right here and you could just drop this in but I've got it off to the side so you don't have to use that one and you can just take this and select the Suzanne it's going to duplicate the Suzanne so if you just hit H you can hide that and then it's going to be hidden in the render as well like automatically also, we have the same color scheme. Uh, in other words, you can choose your own colors, do what you want with them. So I'll just start from the top to bottom. Uh, you've got the add bull box modifiers. So if you just want to delete that and re-add it, you can keep doing it and then select your own base mesh. Now you have the show cavity on and off right here. And you can check for both uh, cavity and screen so you can get a nice look at it like a hard surface model. You can turn the bulls on and off up here and then you have the uh, main boolean settings for self intersection and hole tolerant up here if you need those now on down to the sections I, I split them up in a way that makes them very very organized first off you have the obj or object one properties and that is going to be whatever mesh that you designated over here as your main mesh object so you have some different things you can do, like scale it, wherever you want to do. Uh, the standard subdivision surface is still there, so you can use that, but keep it low until you're done. Um, if you do have the sub D up, uh, you have the edge crease to access that and make some changes if you wish, which will kind of like um, change the edge crease and kind of take it from Catman Clock to... Clark, or whatever you want to call it, to simple in a manner of speaking. And then you have the vertex, uh, vertex crease as well. Then when you're done with that boolean, and we do have that color, uh, when you're done with that boolean, you can click finish. And when you click finish, that's going to turn off that boolean. Now for OBJ2, you can switch that up here and get the base mesh. This is the geometry nodes base mesh. And so, you know, you can kind of move your boolean around, do whatever you want. The whole idea is that you scale this inside of the empty. And um, I think you have better results that way. Now, the base mesh for OBJ Properties 2, you can control all of that right here and change it. You can also add extrusions. So there's an extrusion set up ready to go for you if you choose to use that. And then there's the offsets uh, for each one. So you have to kind of adjust that you know, however you see fit uh, to make the right setup. Now here's the fun thing I did is I actually made like a facade bevel. Okay, so this actually is gonna have a bevel on every single corner automatically now. And you've got a bevel control right here so you can control the radius of that bevel. Be very careful turning it up, but you can turn it up a little bit and it'll give you a uh, facade bevel. It, this is just kind of until the bevel modifier itself comes out or the bevel node rather not the bevel modifier the bevel node um, I did a full tutorial on it you guys can go check that out but if you come over here uh, you'll see there's an actual color for that bevel okay and anything that is extruded any edges that are caught up inside of here like if I turn these extrudes off those will all go away um, any of those edges that are caught up in there during an extrusion will be picked up as a bevel, um, a facade bevel. That's what we'll call that. We'll call that the B-Box bevel for now. And then you can change the resolution on it if it starts looking junky for any reason, like you brought the general uh, factor, rather the radius up, and it starts looking really crappy on the edges, you can bring the resolution up and clean up the bevel, and it'll look really nice. It's not a classic bevel, but you get used to it. And if you don't want to see it at all, you just turn the radius all the way down and disappear it. So you don't have to have it. Then the Z-Flip modifier, the flexible, is still here. Um, 
that one kind of just creates a, a very abstract solidify, if you will. And I think there's like a hundred different things you can do with this as far as uh, variety goes, but you know, just go over that, uh, play around with the segment count. Cause like I say, you can get, you can get all the different shapes in here and let's see if I can just pull this down just enough. And it's all geometry nodes math behind it. So something like that probably end up. Yeah. So that's an integer anyways. And so you can, you can get them by ones and get a very nice even setup. And then, you know, you can uh, flip that and do massive amount of different little things with it, whatever. So I'll turn the Z flip off for now. I don't think it slows anything down, but you've got cylinder, you've got the sphere, you've got the box, you've got the uh, bool, the flex bool, and of course you can change anything you want. So separated down here, uh, bevel props, flex bool props, UV, sphere props. I organized everything out in a very easy setup. And of course, when you're done, click finish bool. And then down here, um, let's see, the cylinder props. We can kind of play around with that for a minute. I want to grab the cylinder and I've got the empties for each one of these. So don't forget that. And so I'm just going to cut in right here and I, I, you know, I want to turn that back on. I want to turn my bevel back on. I like the bevel. Bevel's fun. So something like that. That's so much fun. Okay. So even numbers on the resolution makes it look a lot better by the way. So over here, if you want to do it, you've got the side segments, so you can increase and it doesn't seem to slow anything down. I'm just going to grab this and move it around a little bit. Okay. So it does slow it down a little bit. It's not terrible, but I don't really use these side segments and you're not really going to need them to accomplish what you need in here for the bevel because it's all geometry nodes. You're not, not likely to get shading errors anyways. And of course, we've got the um, depth here, which you can do a lot with that as well and create some pretty neat setups. Um, definitely you can play around with the radius and then, of course, the side segments, top, bottom, uh, if you wanted to like create some extra geo on top of that, you can do that as well. And anytime you want to speed up the B-Box, you can come over here, like if you're lagging out for some reason, the only thing that would do that would be the actual wireframe radius for the um, different bullions. So you come down to the wireframe radius, like here, that's the UV. Let's go to the cylinder. Actually, the uh, wireframe for this one's probably going to show up a little better. So uh, point, like if I just like put point one, it'll blow it up, right? <laughs> That's going to slow it down. So don't do that. Uh, 0 0.002. I mean, you can see it at 0 0.001 and everything will go very fast. You can change the colors for each one of these. Anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, go pick this add-on up. It's on the gum road. Smash that like on the way out because it really helps out the channel. Uh, whatever time it takes, I'll get the other add-on done and that one will be up on the blender market when that one is done and I'll have... Uh, another upgraded version of this one on the gum road just kind of keep things flowing so that's it check out that snazzy snazzy little bevel i got going there it's the b-box bevel it's the best we can do right now see you guys in the next one happy blending